Hi everyone, welcome to Face Facts by Dr. Yusra. On today's episode, I have covered the science behind the aging face. I've explained the anatomical changes that are happening in all five layers of the face, what you need to know, and why this is so important before considering treatments to address the aging face. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, please let me know and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, first of all, I want to say that aging is a beautiful process and it's a gift. Every day that we are aging, we're not dead. And so it's something that we have to be in gratitude for. And this is just an educational platform. I'm here to explain to you how we age and what you're going to see as you age. But this doesn't necessarily mean that you should go and seek treatments. I am not here to fear monger. I am here to educate. And I really believe that if people are informed about their life, their world, their bodies, their anatomy, how we're changing as we age, then they can take ownership of that journey. Now, at the same time, whilst aging is an absolute gift, it's important to understand that as we age, we are more susceptible to age-related disease. And this is true even in the face. Why do I say that? Well, I think let's go down to anatomy. We'll go back to what we see on the outside and what's happening on the inside. So our face is made out of five layers anatomically. The outermost layer is the skin. And then you have a layer called the subcutaneous fat. And then you have a layer called the smas layer or the muscular layer. These muscles are important to express yourself, to move. They help us to animate. And they change as we age. And then we have a layer of deep fat that provides support and then we have the skeleton or the skull and all five layers of the face are changing as we age and it's important to understand when you are seeking aesthetic treatments that all five layers of the face need to be in the same decade in order to get natural looking results it makes no sense to have an aging outermost layer but then you've plumped the deepermost layer with soft tissue filler unless you want to look like you've had work done if you want to look natural and it's important that you address all five layers of the face so that they move together naturally so let's start with what's happening on a cellular level it's important to understand that aging is a biological process and it happens first in the cells the cells actually start to change and the cellular changes is what results in the morphological changes that you see to the naked eye on the outside now what you see on the outside is the skin. The skin is the largest organ of the body and it serves an important function. It's not just there for aesthetics, it's there to do something. It's there to help keep the rest of what's inside our bodies safe. The function of our skin is partly to act as a barrier between us and the outside world. So the barrier function of the skin is to keep the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. So it keeps water in, it keeps our organs in, keeps bacteria out. But on a cellular level, the skin starts to undergo changes. And these changes are partly due to the components of the skin changing. And this cellular pathway and this cellular change starts to occur from the age of 25. So from the age of 25, we are losing collagen, the most important structural protein in our skin, at a rate of 1.5% a year. So by the time you are 35, you have lost 15% of your collagen. This is a normal process. It is an anatomical process that will occur that results in the changes that we see on the outside. Now remember that collagen is not just there to make us look young. It's not just there to keep away lines and wrinkles, but actually it serves a very important function. Collagen is the most abundant protein in our body. And in the skin, it gives our skin structural integrity. That means it keeps it together. It resists forces. And you have another very important protein called elastin. And elastin gives our skin elasticity and bounce. And that's changes as we age, but not in the same way that collagen does. So as we age, collagen starts to reduce in its amount and we are making less collagen over time and we're breaking down collagen faster. Collagen is very important also for wound healing and cellular differentiation. So when you have less collagen, you don't heal as quickly. You're not able to respond to trauma as quickly. But what happens with elastin? Elastin starts to become disorganized. So it's not as organized as it once was. It becomes this mishmash of disorganized fibers. And so it cannot withstand the compressive forces as well as it once did. That means it doesn't bounce back like it once did. And you can get ex exasperated worsening of elastosis, which is this disorganized mesh of elastin secondary to the aging pathway due to the sun exposure. And this is called photoaging or solar elastosis. Aging happens intrinsically because of the passage of time. So we age naturally over time, but aging can be accelerated by lifestyle. 
and part of the things that accelerates skin aging is exposure to sun and exposure to pollution. That is not to say avoid all exposure to sun, but it is to say moderate your exposure to sun and use appropriate skin care and sun care to reduce the harmful impacts of chronic ionizing radiation on the skin. The other really important change that happens as we age is that the extracellular matrix of the skin changes. The extracellular matrix is where the hyaluronic acid lives and the proteoglycans and the glycosaminoglycans. What are they? Big names. These are polysaccharides. They are sugar molecules. They're designed to retain water and hydration. So as we age, we start to have less hyaluronic acid that starts to reduce in its components and it breaks down more readily due to the presence of a naturally occurring enzyme called hyaluronidase that breaks down our hyaluronic acid which becomes a little bit more active as we age and so the actual thickness of our skin changes its ability to respond to wounds changes but also we are not creating new skin cells at the same rate when we are older as we did when we were younger so when we're babies we make skin very quickly our cellular turnover is very quick so we're able to respond to wounds very quickly over the age of 25, 25 is our peak, we start to go down. So the collagen starts to reduce, the elastin starts to reduce, the hyaluronic acid starts to reduce, and our ability and our cellular turnover also reduces. And this changes significantly in postmenopausal skin. Menopause being the time when a woman's period stops. We know that estrogen, which is a hormone, confers some form of protection to the collagen in our skin. And therefore, men and women, by the way, people start to see changes in the quality of the skin. What, what do we mean by quality of the skin? We mean skin texture, we mean skin color, we mean skin radiance, and we mean elasticity to the skin. It's important to understand that these changes occur and how we can reduce some of these ages and uh, these changes. I'm going to go through what treatments work for each of these layers in the next podcast. So as we age, because the cellular turnover isn't as quick as it once was, we can start to get a buildup of dead skin on the surface and we are not exfoliating our skin as readily. And we also get a negative impact on skin cells called melanocytes. These are, these are the cells in our skin that lay down pigment. In the skin, as we age, the pigment producing cells, the melanocytes, can start to lay down more pigment. They can respond unfavorably or dysfunctionally to exposure to sun and even to exposure to heat. So you can get age spots or sunspots or hyperpigmentation as you age. So those cellular changes that are happening will result in the clinical changes or the changes that you're seeing in the mirror, which might be enlarged pores because the elastic wall around the pore isn't as tight. It might be more lines and wrinkles because the structural integrity and the collagen has reduced. It might be more dehydrated skin. It might be more lack luster skin because you have an increase in dead skin and less new skin coming to the surface and it might be more hyperpigmentation. Now let's talk about what happens underneath the skin. The superficial fat starts to change. The superficial fat is there to give us a little bit of bounce, it gives us a little bit of support. And what happens as we age is that you get a redistribution in the fat. So the superficial fat in some areas starts to expand, particularly in the nasolabial folds, so that's these superficial fat pads that sit just on the outer aspect of the lines that run from the nose to the mouth that's called a nasolabial fold as the fat pad enlarges you can get this fold or sausage like appearance starting to hang in this area that can create the appearance or illusion of a sagging face you can also start to get exacerbation of this layer in the gel fat pads. Now the gel fat pads is hammocked, and I'm going to put a picture here so you can see, between two ligaments. One ligament is the mandibular ligament, which is the ligament that goes down from the corner of the mouth down. And then another ligament sits in front of our masseter muscle, which is the muscle that is important for biting or clenching. And so these two ligaments essentially are like toothpicks that hold the skin to the bone. They keep everything attached. And in between the mandibular ligament and the masseteric ligament, you have a jowl fat pad, a superficial fat pad. And this expands as you age, which means you start to lose the beautiful contour of the jawline and you start to get sagging or heaviness in this area. You also start to get an increase in the submental fat pad, which is the fat pad underneath the chin, also known as a double chin fat pad. 
And this means that patients often come in and they say to me, I'm looking sad and that's because of an exacerbation of the sagginess, looking older because they've lost their jawline and the jawline is starting to melt into the neck and I started to get turkey neck or a heaviness down here. That is because of the redistribution of the superficial fat pad. Now let's talk about what happens below that muscle, below that layer. Below that layer, you have this mass layer, a layer of muscle. The muscles that are important in helping our faces to animate, to move, and as we age, this layer of the face undergoes significant changes. It can start to thin and atrophy, which can sometimes be made worse by overuse of botulinum toxin, which becomes important to understand, particularly in the upper muscle here called the frontalis muscle. As this muscle thins, it is unable to hold the eyebrows in place as, as it once did, and you start to get a sagginess of the eyebrows and a heaviness of the upper lid. There's also a very important muscle that goes from the cheekbone to the corner of the mouth. I'm going to show you a picture of this. This is called the zygomaticus minor and major. These muscles help us to smile and they lift the corner of the mouth up. Now what happens more in women than in men is that these muscles become loose and long. They lose their tone and that means that they're unable to hold the corner of the lip up as they once did. So people start to look sad and you can see that when you compare a young face to an aging face as you can see in the picture here. It's important to understand these muscular changes because as the muscle changes and thins out it loses its ability to function. So as some muscles start to thin out other muscles start to expand like the masseter muscle and some muscles start to become hypertonic. They go into excess contraction like for example the depressor muscles, the muscles that are pulling the face down. These are the muscles like the platysmal muscles of the neck and also the muscles of the chin. So you can start to get the muscle of the chin going upwards, causing an indentation in the chin and also a cellulite or orange peel appearance in the chin, which causes a dimpling of the chin. And then underneath that layer, you have deep fat. And the deep fat is like a cushion or a balloon. You have a lot of it when you're young, but these little balloons deflate as you are aging. And when you get deflation of these fat pads, you start to get flattening of the mid face. You also get flattening of the temples. And so you have less support. So if you imagine these balloons shrinking back, you start to lose the structure that you once had. You start to lose the lift and the shape and the contour of the face. And so you essentially have a soft tissue envelope, the skin that no longer sits well on the underlying structure. You start to get flattening of the cheek, flattening of the temple, and that means you have less support. So if you have flattening of the temple, the eyebrow starts to have less support. So it starts to droop. The cheeks start to flatten. And this is what it looks like in the picture. You can see a flattening of the zygomatic arch and then you have the apples of the cheek start to flatten and this can create sagging because the soft tissues and the soft the superficial fat pads start to accumulate here and you get sagging of the jowls as well and the jawline and then the bone undergoes changes now as we age our bone from top to toe starts to decrease in density so we lose density of, of the bone but also this happens in the face not just loss of density but actually widening of the apertures of the face so the apertures are the holes. For example, you have an orbital aperture, which is where our eye sits in, the eye socket that widens as we age, which means that the eyeball sits deeper in. The actual cheekbone, the maxilla, starts to shrink back. And then the hole upon which our nose sits, called the piriform fossa, also widens, which means that the nose has less support. So the nose starts to look longer because it starts to droop and it starts to widen. In the lower face, the mandible, which is the bone of the lower face, starts to shrink back in a horizontal plane. So it starts to become a little bit more receded and also becomes shorter because the ramus of the mandible shortens. And that means we have less support. So all of these anatomical changes that are, to, are happening in all five layers of the face are causing the changes that you see on the outside from the wrinkles, the wrinkling of the skin, the exacerbation of hollowing under the eyes and the lines and wrinkles there, the pigmentation or the sunspots or age spots that you're starting to see, the loss of hydration, the enlarged pores, the flattening of the cheek, the widening and the droopiness of the nose, the deepening of the nasolabial folds, a sad appearance because the corner of the mouth starts to go down, a loss of definition of the jawline and sagging, and hyper tonicity and hypermobility of the muscles because of this shrinking support, which means you start to get more movement in the muscles of the upper face and more movement in the muscles of the lower face. And sometimes as the nose starts to droop and the chin starts to move up, it can create 
and a witch-like appearance, which is something that I see a lot of patients come in and say, I don't like that my chin is moving upwards and my nose is drooping downwards. So that is the essential anatomical changes that are occurring in the aging face. These, of course, will differ patient to patient and person to person. Your trajectory and the way that your face is aging is a blueprint for you. This is different person to person and can also be exacerbated by lifestyle. And there's also a genetic component. But I'm going to talk more about how we age and how we can slow down aging and what treatments can work for all five layers of the face in the next podcast. If you have any questions, you want me to cover anything or go into greater detail about, please leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer. Hope you enjoyed.